Jerry Westrom, here walking in the Hennepin County Government Center, is on trial for the murder of Jeannie Childs. The 35-year-old who worked as a prostitute was found stabbed to death in a South Minneapolis apartment in 1993. Police arrested Westrom 25 years later after announcing they tied him to the crime scene through DNA from a genealogy website. Investigators followed Westrom at a hockey game and fished out a napkin he threw in the trash to obtain his DNA. How you doing? Hello? You Jerry? Yes. Jerry, I'm Chris Karakostas. I work from the Apple's Police Department. This is Chris Smoker, sir. Yeah, it's the FBI. FBI. You're probably wondering what all this is about, I assume, or do you have any idea? I have no idea. Uh, well, let's see if we can clear it up. You know, a lot of times, Jerry, believe it or not, I've had a lot of cases down here, and people come down and they're able to say, hey, you know, uh, this is a situation, whatever, okay? Um, now, this, here's the thing. We are looking at a case that happened many years ago. Okay. Okay, and your names come up in it. And sometimes there's a reasonable explanation why that is, and sometimes there's not. So we just want to talk to you a little bit about that. Is that okay with you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever been read your, your Miranda warning before? Yes. Okay. And did you understand it last time you read it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to read it to you again, okay? Uh, Jerry, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer now and have a lawyer present now at any time during questioning. If you can have a court lawyer, you want to be appointed for without cost. Do you understand those rights? Yes. All right, we want to talk to you about something. Chris, on my desk, I have that folder. Can you grab it? Sure. Do you want me to grab it? I'll get it. Jerry, uh, would you like me to drink? No, thanks. Right. Yeah. And just take a second here and relax. Have you ever been down to, down to this area? Um... Yeah, well, yeah, down to Minneapolis. And have you ever been to this room, City Hall? Um, not for the exact room, no. Okay. Do you need anything? Do you need a do you need bathroom or anything to drink? No. Or do you want some water or anything like that? No. Okay. All right, Jerry. Um, so, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of this area of Minneapolis, see if you've ever been there. And just to let you know, a lot of times these cases, they have, um, a lot of people come up in it. Sometimes they, sometimes we don't have, uh, we, we learn something in these interviews, okay? Are you familiar with these buildings here? Uh, they're in South Minneapolis. They're called the Horn Towers. No. Okay. Let me show you a different picture of these. Have you ever familiar with those? Um, have you li are you familiar with Lake Street? Yeah. Okay, do you know where the Kmart is on Lake Street? Yeah. Okay, so if you look at this map here, you'll see that you have uh, Kmart is right here. Okay. And then um, these are where these three buildings are, the Horn Towers. So Kmart's right here. This is Blaisdell. This is 31st. This is Pillsbury, and these are three tall buildings, and they're called the Horn Towers. People that people from out of Minneapolis may not know them as the Horn Towers, but does do, do this look familiar to you at all? Have you ever been in those buildings that I'm you can sorry. remember? No. Okay. Let me ask you this: In 1993, okay, okay. Um, were you? Did you ever date anyone in Minneapolis? No. Okay. Did you ever? And, and I, I'm sorry, I have to ask you this question, okay? I'm not mm -hmm. trying to embarrass you, but did you ever have sex with a female in Minneapolis in 93 that you remember? Not that I recall. Okay. Um, okay. Does this lady look familiar to you at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, her name is Jeannie Childs. Okay. And she was also known as Jennifer. And so she is a, um, a person that lived in these buildings in 1993. Okay. And she was found in her building in her apartment deceased. Do you know anything about that at all? No. Okay, do, do you think you would have ever had sex with her? I doubt it. No. Okay. I mean... In, in 93, did you, um, and I'm not trying to embarrass you, but did you visit prostitutes at all? Not as far as, um, that's here I met my wife. Okay. I'm not, I don't. Uh, I'm besides your no. wife. 
in 93, would you have been with a prostitute? No, no. Okay, would you have sex with another woman in 1993 other than your wife? Yes. Okay. Um, do you, without, I'm not asking their names, but do you remember the people that you had sex with in 1993? Um, no, I mean, not off the top of my head, no. Okay. But did any of the women live in Minneapolis? Uh, no. Okay. Then, in, in, do you remember where you were living in 1993? Um. In Apple Valley. Okay. Does Egan sound right? Would you have lived in Egan in '93? Um. Could I mean could have been? So. The reason that we're, we're, we're want to talk to you... I'm sorry, real yeah. quick. Does the phone number 612-621-8451 mean anything to you? Okay. All right. The reason that we're talking to you is she was found deceased in her, in her apartment, okay? And we, we think that you were inside that apartment. Would that be any reason for that at all to happen, you think? I have no. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so, now this is a long time ago, are you sure on those answers? I, uh, I, I haven't, yeah, I, okay. <clears throat> so, part of what happened with this case, Jerry, is, the investigators, what they did is they went through and they processed it. And as you can imagine, and I'm sure you're aware of, things are collected and then they're looked at for forever pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in this case. And so I just want to show you just some stuff, nothing gory. Um, but here's a, here's a bedspread. It's got a lot of red stuff on it. It's blood. Okay. Would, would there be any reason why your DNA would be on there? What about... Um, what size shoe do you wear? Ten and a half, eleven, eleven and a half. Okay. See these, these feet print there in the blood? Would those... Any reason why those would be your feet print? No. Okay. And then you see this towel here with the blood on it? Mm -hmm. Would there any, be any reason why your DNA would be on that towel? No. Okay. So, you see this shirt and that washcloth? Okay, so this shirt is um, got a little bit of blood on it, and then this has got some blood on it. Would there be any reason why your DNA would be on those two items? No. Okay. What about this sink here? Would it, in this back area here, see all this blood? Would there be any reason why your DNA would be in that blood there? No. Okay. Does it shock you to know your DNA is there? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Back then, in 93, did you drink? Were you a drinker? Yeah. Um, could there have been a time in your life where you drank and maybe don't remember things? It happened every once in a while. Okay. But I mean, because we're trying. To, I mean, let's try to figure this out here. Because, because, do you remember us at all? Mm hmm Okay. Um. Because this is. So what happened with this case, Jerry? This lady was was killed, and. These are the things that everyone looked at. And then, you know, we started looking at this case three or four years ago and just kind of processed it and, and did whatever. And your DNA is at every one of these locations that we talked about just seconds, a second ago. And I was kind of wondering, you know, do you, do you, do you have any idea why that would be? No. Okay. Uh, here's how I need you to, to understand this. A lot of times people come down here, okay? I mean, by the time that we work on cases, 
it has always been many years, and it is hard for people to get over the hurdle of kind of explaining things away. It's real important that if you remember anything here, to share that with us, because we want to make sure that if something happened in this apartment that you need us to know that we know, okay? Because there's got to be an explanation why scientifically you're there, okay? It can't be a coincidence. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of times things have happened where people say, hey, all of a sudden something happened, or there's here, let me tell you what you don't know, or things along those lines. I think it'd be a good idea for you to kind of get out in front of this a little bit and just kind of say, hey, hold on a second, guys. Let me, let, me, let me tell you some parts that you don't know about this story. You know, science can tell us that, that the person that, that is at all these locations um, was there when this happened and participated in it, but there's the things that the person that was there can fill in gaps, too. And that, that's, what we're, that's what we're asking you for, are those, those gaps. Now, do you know we have your DNA? I assume so. Okay. So, is there any, can you think of anything? I mean, this has been a long time ago, but this is a pretty significant event, wouldn't you agree? I mean, the person, involved in, yeah, the person involved in this is going to remember, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, that's kind of what we're... We're wondering if you have any of that kind of knowledge. Also in this file, the dirty napkin cold case detectives used to make that 100% DNA match. Authorities secretly following Westrom to his daughter's hockey game in Wisconsin and grabbing the napkin out of the trash after Westrom apparently ate a hot dog. Is it there the former Cambridge Isanti businessman and involved hockey dad getting the mandatory life sentence with the possibility of release after he serves 30 years. Now remember here, Westrom is currently 56 years old. His defense attorney, Steve Meshbesher, who shared some time with Westrom before Westrom headed off to prison, is vowing to appeal the conviction. Meshbesher argues that the authorities and jury got this one wrong, and the evidence supports the possibility that several others could have killed Jeannie Childs, who was a prostitute at the time in her apartment back in June of 1993.